Hey everyone, this is producer Peapod here. First off, thank you so much for uh, understanding our delay. I kind of had a little bit of a medical emergency and was in the hospital for a bit. So this episode actually was recorded two weeks ago. Hope you enjoy it. Hopefully you went out to King of the Kill. That's available on replay on demand, IWTV. And again, thank you so much for supporting us here at Real Vile. Here's the episode. 911 Whoa, 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 everybody. You know what time it is. You know what time it is. You know what time it is. It's real vile time, babies, and that's right. It's the G to the E to the R to the M, and the T stands for the, but you already knew that, and we're about to rip it up in a modern way, so you know it's got to be Mr. Germ T. Ripper. And of course, I'm joined by my lovely co-host, the Prime Minister, the Sinister, Mr. Ruthless Chris. Say what's up to the people, Mr. Ruthless Chris. Been a long time. What's going on, guys? Been a long time indeed. I think 14 days plus a few, minus a few. I'm not sure. I'm bad at math. Uh, but let's go on to the Tower of the Power, the Princess of Power. I messed that up, but I love Princess you, of Kelly. The hour, Say what's up to power. the people. <laughs> hey, welcome back. Missed y'all. Welcome back. Missed y'all indeed. Y'all is the non-binary pronoun we're using. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, but it has been crazy around here, and uh, I want to address the elephant in the room. If you want to take two weeks off from recording podcasts, Peapod, you don't have to have somebody hack up your insides and pull out your organs. We oh, save that geez. just for entertainment purposes only. You could just be like, hey, let's take two weeks off. JK, JK, glad we are back. <laughs> love you to pieces i love you all and uh sometimes you gotta be just uh a drama filled bitch and that's what i wanted to do so a bean filled bitch a bean <laughs> bean pod yeah he's he's no bean longer pod. pea pod he, he's he's bean pod because he, they called him so full of rocks he was like a, a maraca yeah they uh they said in my doctor's report because I, I my my gallbladder was quote unquote like a bag full of beans when they removed it so yeah, uh, bean pod, bean pod. <laughs> bean pod indeed. Well, this week on Real Vile, we will be covering the 2021 scary, very scary, very gory uh, two witches Look, are you okay? by Pierre Sigardis, and it should be. If you don't know about this movie, you should because it is very intense, very gory, funny in parts, topical. We're big fans of this, and we're very excited to talk about it. But in the meantime, uh, what have you guys been up to lately? Or do you even want to talk about what you've been up to? Besides, you know, of course, Peapod being drama-filled and having the drama cut out of him by a doctor. Well, there's been a lot. I mean, we had the tournament. Uh, I had my friends from California. Um, long story short, I've been finding dicks all over my house. My dick was covered in, or my, dick, my car was covered in dicks. Your dick was um, covered in cars, bro. I currently have a a dick in my glove box, which, um, <laughs> but funny, funny, um, a couple nights after my dick, or my, Jesus Christ, my car was covered in dicks. That's hard to say. Why is it hard to say? A couple nights after my car was covered in dicks, somebody, like, tried to break into my car, and I had, like, the big main dick <laughs> that was on the top of my car in the glove box. And you can tell they, like, rummaged through it. Like, I didn't notice anything missing, but when I, <laughs> when I got in my car the next morning, the, the passenger door was wide open, my glove box was open, and the dick's just laying, like, right fucking there. <laughs> Big floppy pink dick. <laughs> That's uh, that's an amazing story, Kelly. I, I can't believe somebody would break into your car, find a giant pink dick, and not take it with them. That's I don't think they took uh, anything. I think it might have scared them away. But yeah, there's a... <laughs> yeah. If a big pink dick scares thieves away, then we should put big pink dicks in every car. How about you, Ruthless Chris? What have you been up to? Uh, It's been it's been real eventful. Um. You know, we, we the tournament went down well. No one got injured, so I'm very happy with that. Um, like we were talking before, you know, uh, Peapod 
ended up in the hospital. So that's why it's been uh, a while since you've seen us. You know, uh, he was there for like, what, a week and a half almost? You know, he was there for a while. So, you know, we kind of put everything on hold and that's where we've been. Um, yeah, Kelly with the dicks. Uh, ironically enough, uh, she was smart enough to let Joel Bateman from Australia and I borrow her car so he can go get a bunch <laughs> of candy before he flew back. And we decided to make a dick run. So uh, we <laughs> we stopped off at a porn shop on the way back and bought a giant uh, pink dildo, slapped it to the hood of her car like a shark fin. And it's uh, it's been in her car ever since. Uh, and that's Dude. been the running jokes. So when she's not paying attention, I'll pull it out and suction cup it to the, the, the dashboard. Yeah. It goes flopping and flipping all around. Uh, you get a lot of stares uh, or, or you get a lot of stares, a lot of comments. And then some people like the person at White Castle just don't know what to make of it. Just pretends like it's not there. <laughs> Uh, aside from yeah, that, uh, we've been we've been hitting the uh, the drive-ins quite a bit. Uh, we mm -hmm. went and saw Talladega Nights the other day at the drive-in. That was a lot of fun. We saw Ferris Bueller, uh, and, Smokey uh, and the Bandit, Smokey and the Bandit, and then uh, we're gonna go see uh, Twister tomorrow. So we've been hitting a lot of drive-in. Uh, the drive-ins maybe going out of business at the end of the year. So we're trying to get it all in. Uh, yeah, man, Parkside Drive-In, drive it's, like, in our area. It's been there for 75 years, and it, like, utterly breaks my heart that this place might close. So they're, they're like, asking for all the help that they can get right now. So I don't know if anybody likes drive-ins. <laughs> ironically good. enough, I ended up in the hospital as well. Um, mm -hmm. I'm deadly allergic to bees. During the tournament, I got stung by two bees. It's been two, bee, uh, two bees. Uh, it's been, I think... Going on like 17, 18 years since I've been stung because I found out if you're not like scared of them and you don't go running away and you just like you're calm, they don't sting you. But they ended up under my clothes and they stung me and I was really worried I didn't have an EpiPen. But I seemed fine, you know, it was a little extra itchy and shit. And then uh, I started like bruising and things started getting like weird on my legs and all that. And I ended up going to the hospital and it's apparently um, the type of allergic that I am now, it's like uh, extra coagulating my blood to where it was just turning into gravy and um, it was making it very hard for my heart to pump it through and all that. So I had to get a bunch of blood thinners and uh, they, they uh, injected me with a bunch of saline solution. And then they went in and like cleaned out my veins through my leg and shit. Uh, so yeah, the, we've been in and out of the hospital. It's been a bunch of bullshit, uh, but yeah, we also been watching some movies. Uh, what, what have you been up to Jeremy? Me, myself, and I, not a whole heck of a lot, uh, but it's a big wrestling weekend coming up in Chicago this weekend, and there's so much wrestling going on, I feel like I'm going to get overwhelmed and not go to any of it. <laughs> um, but other than that, just sort of working, watching movies, having people over watching movies, nothing too crazy because, you know, I don't really do crazy too well anymore. Uh, but anyways... It looks like I didn't get the memo to wear a black beanie with scribbly writing on the front. Oh, you shit. guys oh, did. Oh, the new Ruthless Pro beanies. Yeah, I didn't oh, realize shucks. Chris would be wearing his tonight, too. <laughs> Who is? I didn't realize Chris would be wearing his tonight, too. Well, you guys are twins, and we're not making it triplets, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but in the meantime, let's talk about what movies we've been watching. Killer Kelly Miller, why don't you start off this terror train, baby? Um, all right, I'm gonna start with a new one. I think I think it's on Netflix. Uh, I don't know. Most people's heard of it. It's that new fucking Pope's Exorcist, 2023. Um, directed by Julius Avery. He also directed Overlord, which I don't remember seeing, to be honest with you. But you watch uh, it. that's a Nazi zombie movie. Oh, okay, I do remember that one. All right, all right. So I did see that. But anyway, um, Pope's Exorcist, it follows uh, starring Russell Crowe as Father Amorth, which um, I've read a couple like I love I love exorcism movies and I'm like completely fascinated by like demons and exorcisms and all that shit. So I've read a couple books and I think he was one of the subjects in a book I read Hostage to the Devil, which, um, you know, had a lot to do, like apparently true cases of, of exorcisms. Um, but anyway, Russell Crowe plays Father Amort. And, you know, he's working for the Vatican. He has um he's he's got all these cases that he goes to see, and he said probably about 80% of the time it can be contributed to like a mental illness or something. They're like, Oh, what about like the other like 10, 15 percent or 20, you know, because I don't remember if 80 is the exact number, but it, it's something high like that. But they're like, what about the other percent? And he's like, well, you know, the, that's when it gets scary. And of course, he like encounters this kid 
who is obviously fucking possessed. Oh, this movie. This movie was um, pretty fucking cliche. I really liked Russell Crowe as Father of Morth. Um, yeah, there's not a lot to say about the storyline. You know, he's trying to exercise a possessed kid, basically. So it goes back and forth on that with the family and stuff like that. But um, the kid, man, Russell Crowe did great as Father of Morth. I, I really liked him as that character. He made a great exorcist. But the kid the kid was the cheesiest most cliche like annoying fucking thing like there was times i just audibly laughed like what the fuck i feel like they were trying to straight uh like directly rip off reagan in the exorcist like he even had a line that was similar, like i'm fucking your mother in hell like you know and so your mother sucks sucks cocks in hell or <laughs> whatever reagan says but dude it was cheesy that kid made it cheesy, like the stupid, the, the makeup looked bad. They had this stupid overdub for his fucking voice, which I don't know why they did that. It was, it was so bad. I don't know. After like a couple, like, I don't know, 10 minutes watching this kid, I, I couldn't take the movie seriously anymore, which is sad because like I said, Russell Crowe as Father of Morth was awesome. But yeah, I don't know. I'd probably give it two and a half, three. For an exorcism movie, like I said, I love me some exorcism movies. And most of them are really fucking bad. This one's mediocre. Most? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chris, it sounds like you watched uh, Pope's Exorcism as, uh, as well. What are your feelings on this film? Uh, I have not. I, For the most part, it really takes me a lot to watch a possession movie, uh, mostly because, it's, I mean, it's already been done well, and mm -hmm. it's one of those things where it's, it's like what we discover with shark movies, you know, when there's the template, which is, you know, the exorcist, it's hard to deviate from what in people's mind, what works and even do something new. Um, so yeah, a lot of these exorcism movies, I, I do not watch. I avoid them. Uh, it's a, a lane that Kelly really enjoys, but I think they're bad. Uh, what I will say though, is father of Morth is actually the, really the uh, exorcist for the Vatican. And there is an interesting documentary Mm -hmm. uh, made by William Friedkin, uh, the, the director of The Exorcist, where he follows Father Morth around while he's actually doing real exorcisms. Uh, it's kind of a polarizing movie because people feel that Friedkin is trying to like uh, uh, kind of cash in on his exorcism fame. Isn't that the, really... the Devil and Father Morth? Yeah, it, it's called yeah. The Devil and Father Morth. Okay. Uh, so like people kind of love it or hate they they don't realize that Freakin's done so, so much aside from The Exorcist and that he's got actual better movies than The Exorcist. Uh, but yeah, I, I haven't watched it. I have no intention of watching it. I also don't really enjoy Russell Crowe much as an actor. Uh, he did have some cool stuff in his earlier days, like Romper Stomper, but mostly he just he doesn't do it for me. Uh, the other guys, I really enjoyed that. But yeah, I'll, I'll probably never end up watching this one. Yeah, I, you're not you're not missing anything, really. By not watching it, like I said, it's mediocre at best. The The kid is just completely overdone and just fucking ridiculous. It ruined the movie for me, honestly. Well, I uh, I watched this as well. It was on Netflix. Uh, I was pretty excited for it, and I was really willing to give it more stars than I ended up giving it uh, because I love Russell Crowe. He is a handsome, handsome fellow, and I think he's a good actor. Um and uh, the story was all right, and I really like the director, Julius Avery, but I feel like if they had sort of leaned into the campiness of it, because when you're yeah. watching it, it almost had like a Nicolas Cage National Treasure vibe when they're like, oh, well, this is why the Catholic Church is like this, and this is why this. It, it also had like a um, a uh, Here Comes Santa Claus um aesthetic in that you know it ex it tries to explain away the why this is like this and why this is like that and this is why this person does this and it just took on too much for one thing and also uh you know a lot of times with movies i have a real problem when it can't find its identity and this definitely had an identity crisis and like 
there are parts where it's comedic and then there are parts where it's supposed to be very serious. And I think if they just sort of leaned into the campiness and the over exaggeration of the, the whole topic, because overlord is such a fun movie. It's such an intense over the top gory, uh, fun movie that if they had done that with this, it would have been spectacular, but they didn't. And it's unfortunate. Um, but I did, I did wind up still giving it three stars just because Russell mm-hmm. Crowe is amazing in it. Mm-hmm, um, he is. But yeah, if you haven't seen it, which uh, I think most people who have Netflix probably have and listen to the show, but, uh, the Pope's exorcist is on Netflix. I give it three stars. Kelly said two and a half, three. Yeah. And Chris has no interest. <laughs> uh, and on that note, Mr. Ruthless Chris, what have you been watching? All right, so it's been so long, I got to kind of cut down to what I want to talk about. So I'm going to talk about the movies I find interesting that I watched. Uh, the first one is kind of a bigger movie that a lot of people have seen, uh, but I was surprised how much I enjoyed. Um, this is Freaky 2020. I love this one. You no, know, I mean it's it's a Vince Vaughn movie. This is a big mm-hmm. budget, you know, kind of a teen uh horror movie. So I'd put off watching it a while, you know. And uh had I known the joy I would get of watching Vince Vaughn be a 16-year-old girl, it was <laughs> hilarious. Um, you know, I mean, this is a freaky Friday kind of body switch situation, uh, but done with a horror through a horoscope. Um and so Vince Vaughn starts out, he's a serial killer, and there's a teenage girl, and they body swap somehow. So the teenage girl now becomes the serial killer, and Vince Vaughn is a uh, a 16-year-old girl who's trying to keep the young girl from being a serial killer. Wow, this sounds really convoluted when I'm explaining it. Uh, but everyone like, who visibly sees Vince Vaughn knows he's a serial killer, so she is in his body, so she cannot go anywhere uh without you know some sort of reaction from the general public and you know being chased and people wanting to kill or arrest her um you know horror comedy it's it's real hit or miss uh you know it depends on how well it's done uh i think this one really hit it well uh the, the like leaning into even the the gimmick of vince vaughn being this this teenage girl the way he runs the way he embodies it and all that like <laughs> he really went for it and it was entertaining. And then the girl um, that plays, you know, the when she turns to the serial killer, she does a really good job of being like really actually menacing and scary. Uh, there are some really good scenes of gore in this thing, but it's also it's also one you could kind of watch with all your friends without being like, you know, like if they're not into your like gore houndy movies. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, I give it four four out of five. Uh, glad I watched it. I've been putting it off for a very long time. Uh, I think I found out. What else the director had made, and that kind of like pushed me over the edge. Uh, Christopher Landon, who did uh, Happy Death Day, mm. uh, and uh, Boy Scouts: The Guide to the Apocalypse, I really enjoyed. So yeah, I would definitely recommend it. I enjoyed it a lot. Kelly, you've seen Freaky? Yeah, yeah, I really enjoy this, and um, I don't think I, I don't think it would have had the same effect with any other actor than Vince ba- Vaughn. Like you think of any actor and put them in that role it, it was just the fact that it was vince vaughn like running like a 16 year old girl and like it, it, he did it so well yeah I, I enjoy this movie and i agree with chris's rating yeah i've seen this one as well um i am definitely a fan of director christopher landon i think he is able to capture that sort of teen sensibility or young adult sensibility and that comedy and also combine it with horror uh, seamlessly, you know, and he does such a great job of it and he definitely killed it with freaky. He took a trope that has been used to death through the eighties and nineties and he made it into a slasher movie, which is amazing, you know, um, it's great to see that this is streaming on uh, freebie. So if you don't if you don't own it or you didn't see it in the theater, you can watch it for free. Uh, I gave it four stars. I thoroughly enjoyed this one, and uh, yeah, I recommend it definitely. How about you, you guys also said you loved it. Four stars all around. Yeah, four stars. Yeah, I agree with very, that. Very cool. 
All right. Well, I'll then I guess it's it on to me, your MC, Big G. And I'm going to talk about um, 2013's uh, Before Dawn. Uh, this is uh, actually one of my favorite uh, British directors, Dominic Brunt, uh, his debut film. And I'm surprised I had never watched it. It's a zombie movie. And I think probably I didn't see it at the time because there's so many zombie movies that came out around that time. Uh, I, I first learned about Dominic Brunt because he was associate producer on the British horror comedy Inbred. Uh, it's kind of like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre type vibe. People out in the countryside meet a wacky cult. And uh, so I guess it's more like 2000 Maniacs. But anyways, back to Before Dawn. Before Dawn uh, is a, a couple and they're kind of like on the brink of divorce and uh dominic actually besides directing this film he actually plays the uh, main male character in this and uh, so as they're trying to repair their marriage by going on a vacation in the woods go camping or whatever but in a cabin uh they are under siege by zombies and yeah it's bloody and it's gory there are a few bits of comedy here and there but compared to his other works that i've seen uh this is pretty straightforward it's pretty humorless and uh i thoroughly enjoyed it uh it, i watched it on prime i believe but it's on plex and prime and roku and tubi if you're interested in checking out uh a horror movie by Dominic Brunt, a zombie film, even, it, you know, for no budget. He did a lot with, you know, a, a small cast and limited resources. So I, I highly recommend it. I give it three and a half. Uh, have you guys seen Before Dawn? I don't think so. I have not. All right. Well, in that case, we're going to keep this terror train a rolling down the tracks. Uh, and we're going back to Kelly. We're going back to Kelly. Going <laughs> back to Kelly. All right. What? I watched this one um, <clears throat> earlier today. I just kind of stumbled across it, went into it blind. Uh, this is Out of the Dark, 1988. It's on Tubi. It follows... Um, in LA, there's a you know like a, a sex line like like they used to have back in the eighties, early nineties, like one eight hundred sex fat tits or <laughs> fat big tits, tits or, or big dicks, yeah. hard dicks, no. <laughs> um, hard dick. <laughs> but yeah, um, out of the dark. It so amongst this uh sec they, they kept calling it a phone fantasy hotline so that's what it is there's a stalker uh stalking these the you know phone actresses operators and killing them they're all kind of dropping off one by one the killer is a clown named bobo <laughs> and uh yeah, I mean, it's creative. It wasn't exactly what I was looking for when I went into it. I was like, oh, yeah, 1988 slasher movie. It was a little slower paced than I, than I wanted. Um, there's lots of just, like, pointless reasons for boobs and, like, the creepy-ass photographer. Yeah, so these girls are all working this, like, sex line. And, um, you know, the sex line starts getting picked up by, like, a magazine. They get a photographer so that starts doing shoots, and these girls are just dropping off one by one. There's a creepy clown st stalker that's, like, following them home and killing them off. Um, he uses kind of, like, creative ways of killing them. There's a garden hose scene. There's also a scene where one of the girls finds a box of nipples. You know, which was, <laughs> it was interesting. It all in all, it was kind of slow, but pretty predictable. But at the same time, it had a twist ending that I did not see coming. So it was like kind of predictable, kind of cliche, but it like it had your surprises here and there. All in all, it was a pretty decent watch. I'd probably give it a three. You know, it it wasn't what I was looking for when I went into a 1988. Uh, slasher movie just because it was a little slower a little di more dialogue heavy i suppose than you know actual like cheesy 80s killing is what we look for when we go into 80s movies fair enough absolutely yeah. you said three three and a half yeah three i'd give it three solid three mm -hmm. very cool yeah no i've always wanted to check this movie out uh do you know what it's streaming on it is on tubi and it's also starring karen black 
She is the woman that runs the um, phone fantasy operation. And she's, you know, horror, horror legend, I suppose. Very cool. Yeah. Chris, have you seen Out of the Dark? I have. It's been a number of years. Uh, I remember liking it. I remember being kind of mm -hmm. silly. Mm -hmm. It is kind of silly. Yeah, uh, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I don't I don't remember enough about it to give it a proper star rating, but I remember liking it. So I say like two and a half. Yeah, it's it's kind of a dark comedy. Also, in like ways more of like a thriller than it is straight up horror. But it's definitely a horror movie, like with the killer and the clown mask and the some of the creative killing scenes and the box of nipples, you know. I'm just curious, are the box and nipples, are they severed nipples? Or are they yeah, like yeah. fake nipples? Are they rubber nipples? Oh, no, they're severed. Oh, okay. All they're right. Well, nipples. I'm into I'm, Yeah, that sounds interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, check out Out of the Dark. It's on Tubi, and it's a classic 88 uh, slasher. But uh, Ruthless Chris, you got another one for us, baby? Yeah, I'm deciding which one I want to cover next because I got to cut either one or the other because there's one I'm going to talk about at the end that was like a cult classic. I can't, well, I hope turns into a cult classic because I had never even heard of it before, but it blew my mind out. But you know what? Fuck, I'll, I'll talk about Portals. Um, it's a newer movie, 2019. This is an anthology uh, uh, headed up by Eduardo Sanchez, who um, you may know from Blair Witch Project, but I've been diving into his other movies because I'm finding that most of his movies I enjoy. Like he did exists. Um, he did um, uh, the believers, which was that cult movie. Uh, he makes, he makes a lot of interesting, really interesting movies um, and not most of them aren't uh, found footage. Uh, this one was not, uh, but there's a couple directors on this too. He, he directs like the, the bulk of it. And then there's like, stories that are sprinkled in by these other directors uh but what you have is there's like a worldwide blackout and when this blackout starts all these like it, like cosmic portals open all around the world and people who stare into these portals is kind of kind of like start losing their shit or start running into these things and then like mm -hmm. they kind of start killing each other um this one was really good for a while mm -hmm. um it, it had some really interesting concepts going on it really took some big swings for the budget it had on there was some good uh, acting on it, you know. Uh, they did it in small, um, like uh, uh, small sets, but it didn't feel small. If that makes sense, like some of it was, uh, uh, or a big, big majority of it had happened in a parking garage, and it's kind of like I uh, remember Demons too. Like when they did the parking garage, uh, it didn't feel small. Like it yeah. felt like it, it, it served the story. I mean, it was like that. The real, the real problem I had was they just they biffed the landing so hard um mm -hmm. had they stuck the landing i would have loved this movie i loved three-fourths of it uh mm -hmm. kelly watched it with me we had the projector set up in the backyard at her place um you know for like three-fourths of it we were really really into it and i even like looked at it at one point i said I was like if they fuck up the ending it's gonna ruin the rest of this movie and that's exactly what did <laughs> um so i really wanted to like this three-fourths of it's really good um i don't understand why they went the way they did with the ending um it's really unsatisfying and not even in like a cliffhanger either there's going to be another one kind of way just like just like mm -hmm. a fart in the wind kind of way where it was like all this <laughs> for that you know um with that being said, I'd still recommend it because there's a lot of really interesting stuff going on, a lot of cool ideas. There was like a lot of cool kills. It was bloody. The special effects were good. The acting was good. I think for the most part, Eduardo does a really good job at most of the things he does. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I give it a two and a half with the caveat that if they would actually stuck the landing, I probably would have given it a four. So it was that good for most of it. And then it really hit a wall. Dude. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, what is this streaming on? Tubi. Everything Tubi, I watch. Of course. <laughs> and uh, uh, Kelly, uh, what do you think about portals? Dude, that parking garage scene was one of my favorite parts. It was all it was all done in one shot too, which is what made it really cool. This movie had a feeling like it was shot by different directors at different parts it of the was. movie. It was okay. Okay. Yeah. I covered that. 
the okay i missed that but the uh the parking lot scene was definitely awesome and and chris chris is absolutely right like he said that to me he's like if they don't nail the ending of this it's going to completely ruin the movie and it kind of did because you're right three quarters of the movie was fucking dope you're like where the hell are they going with this you know it was it was really interesting the ending did ruin it it was so uneventful and uh what's the word uh you know what I mean. Anticlimactic. Anticlimactic. That's the word. That's the word. If you're going to give it a star rating, what would you give it? I agree with the two and a half, man, or hardly a three if they would have sucked that landing. Fair enough. Okay. Well, I haven't seen Portals, but, you know, I, maybe I'll watch three fourths of it. <laughs> uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to talk about the next movie that I watched. Um, and I, it was a blind buy from Severin because uh you know i know those guys and sometimes i just buy a bunch of movies from him because 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 of the wonderful things he does um well the next movie i'm going to talk about is 2004's kenneth j hall directed the halfway house um this is utter dog shit but you know it's an inter- <laughs> <laughs> it's an intervision title, so you already know it's going to be micro budget. It's there's no budget for this film. Uh, what drew me to it was uh, that it stars Mary Warnoff, which you know from Rock and Roll High School, Eating Raul, uh, and uh, she even had a cameo in um, Chopping Mall. She plays a nun in this movie. It's like a halfway house, or you know, hence the name, the halfway house for troubled girls. Um, it reminded me a lot of reform school girls if you've seen that movie or like a lot of women in prison movies so yes there's a lot of titties in this movie if you are watching horror movies for titties this is a good one for you um but the it says that it was made in 2004 but the only thing i can notice and this is from my extensive viewing of porn is that like in the 90s how you could always see uh the women's like breast implant scars on their breasts. All of the actresses in this movie have this. That's why I'm like, this isn't from 2004. This is from before 2004. This those breast those breast implant scars look very 90s. Um, so uh, I showed this to a bunch of friends, not knowing, and that was okay. We all had a good time watching it. We laughed at it. We didn't laugh with it. We laughed at it. Um, there is a giant monster in the movie because. You know, they even put as one of the writers of the film H.P. Lovecraft. It's based on H.P. Uh, H.P. Lovecraft's sort of mythos. Um, so there's a yeah, she's feeding these girls to a giant monster in the basement. Acting's really bad. Lots of boobs. Some some good gore actually. Uh, if you're gonna watch this with friends and make fun of it and have fun with it, I definitely highly recommend it. If you're watching it because you enjoy cinema, you're a big dummy. Um, I'm giving this two and a half just because it's fun. Uh, other than that, I'd probably say, "Hey, Germ, thanks for watching it for me, so I don't have to watch it." <laughs> but yeah, halfway <laughs> house. If you want to have some fun, if you're if you're fucked up and you want to watch something stupid with lots of tits, uh, it's on Tubi for free. So you know, it's not like you're spending any money on it. I, I think I only spent like eight bucks on it myself, so it wasn't a whole lot. It wasn't a big loss. <laughs> um, have you guys have either of you seen or heard of the halfway house? Nope. I've I've uh, heard of it. I have not seen it. Um when I see that Intervision logo, usually it's like I got it, I got to be in the mood for it, like kind of like a trauma movie, you know? Like I can't just watch a trauma movie at every second of the day, but when I'm in the mood for it, I'm in the mood for it. So those Intervision movies I kind of put off for a little while, so no, I haven't I haven't checked that one out yet, no. Well, we definitely popped for the giant monster. Uh, so, yeah, like I was saying, if you're going to watch it with some friends and laugh at it, it's definitely worth it. It's a fun one. Uh, but two and a half from me, and it's on Tubi. Okay, one more round before we get to our main film. Killer Kelly Miller, what you got for us, baby? The next one I watched is also a new one, and this one was fucking awesome. This one is on Prime. It is 2023's Angry Black Girl and Her Monster. Uh, I love this. I love this one. It's directed by uh, Bamanis or Bomani J. Story. I didn't recognize anything else that he's done. 
Uh, but um, basically, it follows this girl. Uh, what the hell was her name? Valeria? Is it Valeria? Something like that. Anyway, um, she she you know she's like a high school student, and she believes that death is curable. This comes after her mom. Her mom was basically shot in the head, like holding her, you know, when she was little. And then her brother died, was murdered, you know, doing like gangbanger shit. Like, you know, they live in a shitty neighborhood and stuff like that. There's also uh, some grave robbing going on around their town. Well, uh, Vicky, Vicky, no, Vicaria, Vicaria is her name. Something like that. <laughs> anyway, anyway, oh, uh, she she's trying obviously she's the grave robber she's got her brother's body and she's trying to cure death well it actually happens this is basically a retelling it's a modern retelling of the frankenstein story and i absolutely love frankenstein that that story it's sad this movie is very sad but at the same time, it's so good. Like, this is one of the better retellings of that story that I've ever seen. And if you, you know, we all know the Frankenstein story. She's basically Dr. Frankenstein. And the body she brings back is her brother. And, you know, he goes around. Uh, as soon as she brings him back, people's like, what the fuck is that? Start calling him a monster and shit. So he starts believing he's a monster like Frankenstein. And, you know, fucking killing people. But, yeah, no, this is one of my favorite retellings of this this and that one that chris what was that one that you and i talked about the other day like that early 2000s one i think it was just called frankenstein wasn't it yeah 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 it's, it's uh you can watch it on um shutter there's a movie just called frankenstein i think it's from like 2007 um has a cheesy generic cover and it is fucking awesome yeah yeah but I think this and that one, and of course the original, might be my favorite because this has been done do dozens of times. But this this one nailed it, nailed it. It's um, it's sad, it's gory, it it keeps you, it keeps you like into it. It it's a great movie. I highly recommend this. I gave it a four, four, four. Pretty cool. That's uh, Angry Black Girl with the Monster. Angry Black Girl and her monster. And her monster. Okay, yeah. very cool uh at four four stars and what was it streaming on again uh it i had to pay for it i actually rented this one i think it was like 5.99 but it was it was well worth it, it i've been prime. eyeballing it for weeks and yeah yeah it's worth it i, I would like to buy this one actually I, cool. I highly enjoyed it it kind of remember what was i talking about that the horror of dolores roach how that was the like a retelling of um sweeney todd it was kind of like in the same vein of that is that except that was more comedy this was not okay this is much more serious very cool yeah i've been wanting to check that one out myself it definitely uh has an interesting title mm -hmm. i didn't know too too much about it but now that you've uh, spoke so highly of it mm -hmm. i think i'm gonna have to check that one out chris have you seen the angry black girl uh yeah i watched it as well um I would say that this is definitely a director to watch. I believe it's their first film. Um, it's a insanely impressive. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the storytelling, like you could tell just by this first film that this is going to be a big talent to watch in the future. It's, it's super well done. They pull a lot of good emotion out of people, a lot of great performances. It's not just a monster and gore movie. Like it, it really does give the heart to the Frankenstein story. Cause like Kelly said, it really is Frankenstein. Uh, but, but, Told more in a uh, uh, urban, you know, uh, uh, environment. I really loved it. Um, I could see myself buying it as well. I think it's going to turn into a modern cult classic. So I would also give it four. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Well, with two four star ratings, I feel like I have to see this one. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the meantime, what you got for us next, Chris? All right. This is my pick of the, the week I found. I had never even knew this movie existed. Well, that's not true. This is like uh, one of the ones I've seen the cover of a million times in the video store growing up. I was always curious about it. So the other night I clicked on it and I was like, fuck it, we'll give it a shot. And then when I clicked on it, I saw who the cast was. And then I was really excited. So this is um, from 1992. I'm, hold on, I'm pulling the letter boxed up. 1992. Uh, this is Mind Warp, directed by Stephen Burnett. Uh, it stars Bruce Campbell and Angus Scrim. 
So you got yourself Ash and you got yourself the tall man in this. Um, this, this, I went in blind on. I just knew the cast. I knew it was going to have, I read the, the brief, like two line description. Um, and it had mentioned uh, post apocalyptic and cannibals. And I was like, all right, fuck it. I'm in. So what you have here uh, is a woman who lives in a like a utopian society uh, who all are jacked into these machines that feed them drugs and like keep them docile, almost like the fucking Matrix. Like this is the Matrix before the Matrix. Like they had to have seen this to get this idea. Like it's very similar. And they're all being like brainwashed by this company called Infinisith. Uh, one of the, the uh, girls, uh, her father ends up disappearing. And she ends up being like, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to jack in this machine. I want to experience life. I want to see what's going on out in the outside world. And everyone, you know, they're all like, everything's dead out there. There's nothing going on. She keeps demanding, keeps demanding. She gets kicked out of her society. Uh, in a very funny scene where just a couple futuristic guards come and just stuff her in a, a garbage bag and then go and bury her in the desert. And then she pops out of the garbage bag in the desert and there's just a bunch of skeletons crucified in a wasteland. So she goes from this futuristic society. Now she's out in the post-apocalypse. Uh, she falls into a sinkhole. She's screaming for help. Uh, some mutants come and attack her. Uh, then uh, Bruce Campbell comes and saves her. He's very much, without the one-liners, he's pretty much fucking ash from Army of Darkness in this thing. But it's a post-apocalypse as opposed to... And, it, and I think this came out the same year as Army of Darkness. So like, they look exactly the fucking same in this thing. So up to that point, it was a decent movie, right? And then the shit hits the fan. The whole th uh, second half of this thing feels like it takes place in the tunnels of uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, uh, except with a lot of red lights, a lot of mutants, and a lot of gore, uh, with a big hint of uh, uh, Temple of Doom in there. Um, basically, there's these mutants called Crawlers. They come out of the earth. They suck you down in these holes in the earth and take you down to their lair, and then they cannibalize you. Uh, they all get sucked down there. Um, Angus Scrim is their overlord. He wears a hood made of human flesh and eyeballs, uh, who is putting people through a meat press and then juicing them and then feeding their guts to all the underworkers. Uh, I'll leave it at that. I think I've already said too much, but this thing was a bloodbath. It was weird. It was fucking fantastic. I loved everything about it. I, you know, so it's Bruce Campbell versus Angus Scrim. What's not to like, <laughs> you know? Plus, there's a, a bunch of mutants in it. It kind of felt like a Guar music video for for a chunk of it. Um, couldn't recommend it enough. I watched it on Tubi. At the day after I watched it, I got online and I bought a double disc uh, with that and Brain Scan off of Amazon. Um, Mind Warp. Don't let the uh, the cover. Fool you, because the cover has a woman that's very elegantly dressed, futuristically pulling the cord out of the back of her neck, and there's lightning, and it seems like it would be like more of a lawnmower man situation when this is more of like a vile descent into mutant hell kind of thing with Bruce Campbell and Angus Scrim. So with that being said, four stars, loved it, couldn't recommend it enough. I do not know how people have not seen this and don't talk about it. Yeah, what did you say this was streaming on again? Tubi. Mm -hmm. Tubi, of course. Tubi, of course. Um, yeah, okay, no. Apparently, the original title was Brain Slash, and then they changed it to Mind Warp. Yeah, I think Brain Slash would have drawn more people to see it because uh, everything you said sounds amazing, uh, and I've never like I I will openly admit I've never heard of this, and the cast and everything you said sounds like something I need to see. Uh, so I will have to go check it out on Tubi. Uh, Kelly, have you seen Mind Warp? <laughs> well, well, he kind of watched this in my backyard, but at that point. I'm not going to lie. I drank a bottle of wine that night, and for most of this time, I was tending to the fire, which I eventually destroyed. <laughs> she didn't watch much of Mind Warp. I watched. <laughs> I didn't watch much. No, I didn't. And then my friend Tony stopped by, and I don't know. <laughs> Freaking no, Tony. I, I missed so much more of it than I should have. So. Uh. I'm going to blame it all on Tony from now on, <laughs> you know, him and his pizza. I'm going to, I'm going to tame it on, blame it on Sludgehammer, which is the name of the fucking red <laughs> wine she was drinking. 
because I kept singing Peter Gabriel lyrics at her. Uh, oh, I'm I'm going to turn into Millie Vanilli. <laughs> blame it on the rain. Yeah, yeah. Don't blame it on yourself. Blame it on the <laughs> rain. I think that's how it goes. I'm not really sure. The four stars, two be mind warp. I got to check it out. It's for free. Why not? Uh, in the meantime, I got one more movie to talk about. One more time. One more time. Uh, this is 2004's uh, Jeff Lieberman directed Satan's Little Helper. Um, I don't know if you've seen this or not. It's not a great movie. Uh, but for some reason, I got really excited that Synapse was putting it out as a collector's edition Blu-ray. And I had to purchase it as soon as it was released. Uh, I'm glad that they're no longer selling their movies for $50 a pop. And now it's $30 a pop. But I showed this to my friends the other night. Uh, it was a double feature with Halfway House and then Satan's Little Helpers. Uh, Satan's Little Helper is a bizarre film, uh, and it's a, about a naive young boy who unknowingly becomes a pawn of a serial killer. Uh, yeah, the, the gore is great, uh, what there is of it. The story is, is a really flimsy, and... Uh, it just keeps going and going and going when like this could have been a, a great short film maybe, but it, you know, at a hour and 36 minutes, it just seems to be way too long. Uh, and I know that the director, Jeff Lieberman uh, is well known for like his late seventies, early eighties films. Cause I mean, uh, he's responsible for 1976 squirm, 1977's blue sunshine, 81's just before dawn. Uh, but then, like, you start going closer to 2004's Little Satan's Little Helper, and the last thing he did before that was The NeverEnding Story Part 3 in 1994, which I didn't there's even know freaking three? existed. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that existed. Right. Uh, there's probably a good reason for that, I'm guessing. Um, yeah, so Satan's Little Helper, I'm sure I watched it before when I was drunk and didn't remember anything about it except for the basic concept. Uh, watching it again sober, I, I don't know. I have no idea why drunk me love this so much. Uh, at the same time, there's enough to laugh at. There's enough to have fun with. Uh, and uh, I'd also got to say that uh, Amanda Plummer, who you might know uh, more as the f actress in Pulp Fiction, who screams that she's going to kill every last motherfucking one of you. Uh, is in this. She plays the mom, and she's actually Funny fantastic. Um, Funny. The main uh, actor, the little boy that in this film, uh, I, I I think that he, I'm not sure if he was supposed to be like he had special needs or not, but he sure seemed like it in the movie, and uh, I I wanted to I wanted to feel for him. I wanted to feel sorry for him, and. I, it's one of those films where you can't really tell was it supposed to be for kids and then they added in like a boob and some gore or should it have been for adults and just ramped up the violence and the gore and you you know movies like that i always have a hard time with um that being said i still gave it three stars just because it was a lot of fun to watch with friends and it's got some uh clever tropes and some you know, some good laughs, like I said, some good laughs to have with friends when watching this. Uh, otherwise, if you're not watching it to laugh at it, I'd suggest not watching it. Uh, it is streaming. Uh, if you don't want to pay the $30 for a physical copy, it is uh, streaming on Screenbox. So uh, if you got Screenbox, it's, you know, it's all right. You know, <laughs> it's all right. Three stars for me. Have you guys seen Satan's Little Helper? I believe I have. It's been a long time, and I very vaguely remember it. Like not enough to even give it a proper judgment. So, yeah. It's uh, it's been a few years for me, but uh, like you, I remember utterly loving this movie, and I actually do remember a lot about it. You know, I remember it being absurdly low budget, but also for the concept, it not needing much of a budget. Uh, I remember, you know, uh, it was a Halloween movie. I remember, like, you know, around Halloween time, I should give it a revisit. But I remember really liking it and thinking it was an interesting concept and it was kind of well done. Uh, so for my nostalgia love, like you said, you used to remember loving it. I feel the same way, but it's been a number of years since watching it. I'll just give it a three. 
Pretty is fair enough. And with that, do 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 chugga chugga chugga. We're all gonna be cruising into Spoiler Town. Spoiler Town. Spoiler 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 Town. So yeah. if you haven't yeah. seen Two Witches and you don't want to be spoiled by our spoilers, you might want to pause this and come back to it later. But otherwise, listen on, kitties, because Real Vile is about to dig into 2021's Two Witches, directed by Pierre Sagardis. And now for our feature presentation. Uh, I'm probably mispronouncing that name. I'm trying really hard to pronounce it correctly. But man, oh man, this is a fun movie. Uh, if you like witch movies, uh, it was originally suggested by Killer Kelly Miller. And, uh, you know, it's a chapter based film about an aging, malevolent witch intercedes in the lives of two young women. Uh, Killer Kelly, since this was your uh, suggestion originally, why don't uh, could you tell the folks about a little bit about this film? Okay, um, this phone, uh, this movie, film. <laughs> I said phone and movie. I don't know. But this film, um, as the title says, follows two witches. In the beginning, it kind of shows them, um, you know, cackling over a newborn baby. And then it kind of cuts to the first witch, the older witch. And um, she's sitting in a restaurant, kind of observing a, a couple where the woman is pregnant. And um, she gives her this look. And this woman gets this feeling like she's like, that lady just gave me like the evil eye or something. And then like for the next few days, she just feels just sick about it. Like I'm, she feels cursed. She feels just something ain't fucking right about that lady. And everybody thinks she's insane. So um, her and her uh, fiance or husband or whatever he is to her, her and her uh, partner, they go, they go to his friend's house and his friend, the, they're also a couple. The female happens to be like a, um, she gets paid to do like psychic things like seances and all that sort of thing. Well, um, they want to figure out if this lady gave her a fucking curse, you know? And I don't know, they, they play like some Ouija board games. Chris, you're looking, what do you got to say? I feel like you got something to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just listening to you lay out the whole story. That's all. Okay, go on, go on. <laughs> no, go, I, I didn't right. say a word. I was literally <laughs> just sitting here like this. Anyway. Well, Drinking my like, damn green tea, listening to you talk. <laughs> anyway. Um, so she does some sort of like Ouija board sort of thing. And there's a thing that's going on where, um, each person that is playing the Ouija board has a candle. The candle's supposed to re represent their life and what's, or, you know, their soul or something like that. And, you know, the guys are fucking around during the, the Ouija board and they're making jokes of it. So they're like, fuck this. And they all get up and walk away. Well, they go outside and hang out for a little, little bit. When they come back in the room, just the pregnant girl's candle was burnt all the way down right so um yeah i don't know obviously she's um <laughs> there's some shit going on i don't know what do you guys have to say don't let me lay out this whole movie without you guys saying something like <laughs> this is the I, I didn't expect you to give it like a, a plot for plot <laughs> no, stop like, me before i get too far what do you guys got to say <laughs> okay. no i thought you were doing a great job kelly actually because <laughs> you know uh this movie is got a lot going on, but at the same time, uh, I love that when I was watching the extras on the Blu-ray, uh, that they were trying to, uh, the, who, the interviewer who was interviewing the director was trying to like get some, get some extra like, uh, subtext out of him. He's like, Nope, just trying to make a scary movie. <laughs> He's like, was it about this? Was it about that? Like, nope, I just made it about witches because witches are scary. And yeah. they want to make a scary movie. And it's a scary movie indeed. And they pulled it off. Uh, like, this is told in, in two parts, you know? Like, it, it's told with the first part with the old witch, and then it cuts to the second half with the younger witch. And I, I think both uh, halves of this movie are very fucking effective and scary and creepy. And then the way they intertwine together in the end is also fucking awesome. Like, this movie's got a uh, cult classic written all over it, and I don't think a lot of people has even heard about it i'll say this um 
when it comes to witch movies, you kind of get like a couple different camps. You got like the, you know, the cauldrons, pointy hats, broomsticks, where it's almost like the cartoony, you know, 1950s to 70s kind of style. You got your modern witches, you know, where like who are just like regular women who have crystals. And then you got kind of like your hag witches, you know, and mm-hmm. I think this falls under the the hag um, banner. Yeah. Um, and these witches are Brutal. mean and malevolent yeah. and dark and dirty. And I mean, like there's certain scenes in this where I would compare it to some of like the meanness of the original Evil Dead, um, like just in its effectiveness of like watching someone turn from one thing into another um one of the things i did notice about this is it's like upon watching it uh a second time i watched it again today because this was supposed to be our episode uh that we were going to record right after the tournament before everyone ended up in the hospital and all that so it'd been a while since i watched it i wanted to Mm -hmm. re-up and uh one of the things i noticed this this way around is like you remember how like michael keaton in the 90s was all eyebrow acting yeah like he was a lot of eyebrow acting. This is all like facial holding acting. Everyone's like, <laughs> like just there making is these, a like, lot. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, every scene. Like, so like I like the second time around after like I caught on to it, I was like, this is the face acting movie. Uh, but no, it's mean spirited. Um, there is humor, but it's very sparse. Um, I would say uh if you haven't watched it and you decide to go into the spoiler section anyway, if you are uh upset by things like um infant side or like child cannibalism do not watch this because they do not bat night that i mean the whole the whole backstory of this movie is about eating kids you know like it's a it's a dirty dark movie and it has no problem pulling any punches but not only that it looks fantastic like you know it doesn't feel cheap it feels like they were able to pull off what they were trying to pull off the acting was good the special effects were good the scares were great there's uh, I noticed things uh, the second time watching that I didn't notice the first time because, like, when I knew where it was going, and I wasn't focusing so much on like maybe the person talking, I started noticing that, like the witches like silhouettes and like little glowing eyeballs would be like just kind of appearing in the background of certain scenes in the dark and shit. Uh, it was it was really cool. It definitely it would, rewards upon repeat viewing. Yeah, man. And the, the, I like the second witch a lot, too. Like, they took it to a whole other level. It went from the creepy story with the couple in their house, and that turned into some crazy-ass bullshit with the baby going missing and the pregnant girl going missing, and then the husband being dead. And then when they follow into the younger witch, it's the older witch's granddaughter, and she's basically waiting for her grandmother to die so she can inherit all of her powers when she dies. And she does. And it gets brutal again. But, yeah. I love the brutal the br- brutal energy throughout the film. But, like, uh, the first the first half, almost, for me, it felt like if A24 was going to do, like, drag me to hell. Because it yeah. had that, that cursed uh, dead eye witch thing. But at yeah. the same time, it was kind of slow and it's kind of plotting. Um which was great, but then the 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 second chapter was more fast paced. It was more gory. Mm. It was more brutal. It was more in your face. So when they flip the script with the tone of like it, because you know, not that I don't like a slow moving movie, but I do. But when uh, you had mentioned that it was Sam Raimi like, I was mm-hmm. expecting more yeah. more of like those quick those quick camera shots and fast pacedness. And you get that in that second chapter, and you get that in the epilogue of the film, mm-hmm. which is great as well. Um, yeah, it, it, this movie is very smart, very, very gory, and very well done. I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, I'm, I'm also, glad you um, suggested it. There's a post credit scene. Uh, yes. I don't know if any guys that caught that, but there is a scene after the credits. Yep, I watched it. Um, I watched this three times now. Yeah, on the third time is when I caught that because it was still playing, and I walked out in the other room. And I was like, "Oh, wait, there's more," you know. <laughs> but yes, there there is an after credit scene. Watch that because it does tie some shit together that was missing from the first uh, part of the movie. Yeah, I mean, uh, the the only thing unfortunate about this title is that if you're looking to watch it for free, it is not available on any free streaming services right now, but it's definitely worth the $3.99 to rent it on Prime Video 
or if like myself you uh love physical media you can buy uh, a new copy of it for relatively cheap off of amazon i got the uh arrow is actually distributed by arrow oh. so you know it's packed full of uh extras and that's always well worth the price uh i think it was like it's between 20 and 30 dollars is well rel relatively um uh, well priced for an arrow uh for an arrow film you know and it's definitely worth it i gave it four stars what do you guys uh give two I, I also said four four and a half even like i am a huge mark for fucking witch movies as well and i think this is one of at least in my top five witch movies for sure very cool uh, chris what do you what do you give it I'll give it a four and a half as well, because I also feel like not a lot of people make these kinds of movies anymore, at least the way this is told. It definitely has a very old school, um, like, where they take the time to tell the story without rushing it through it, even though it's very fast paced kind of uh, feel to it. Uh, it definitely had like a very timeless feel like uh, you could have told me it was made, you know, 20 years ago, I would have believed you. You could have told me it was made yesterday. I would have believed you. So with that, I think that's really impressive. I hope a lot more movies follow suit and kind of come out like this. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I would say it was comparable to a, a, a black girl and her monster in the, in the way it was filmed and told. Like it had like an almost like old school elegance to it, even I though it was that. very brutal. So I'm with that, I'll give it four and a half because I, I really want more movies like this. And I'm glad Kelly talked us into watching it because, you know, she brought it to the table first and she was putting it over for weeks before we got around to checking it out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, I believe this is this director's first movie as well. Yeah. So I, I can't wait to see more out of him. Like after seeing this one, this is sold, man. This one's dope. Yeah, when you have such an impressive debut film, yeah, you know, it it gives fans um a, a great appreciation and uh, a, a deep anticipatory I don't know if that's a word, if I make it up, anticipatory sounds uh sounds real. Lo but yeah right funny. longing for what are you gonna do next so i can't wait to see what he does next as well uh so four four and a half stars all the way around definitely worth the 3.99 to rent off of amazon prime um and if you like i said if you want to you should get the physical copy well worth the price uh but that's probably about it do you guys have anything else to say about two witches before we wrap it up no i think we covered the basis of it just watch it though like this is a definitely underrated unknown movie that more people need to watch and like i said earlier i can see this being a cult classic if, if it gets the following that it deserves yeah and uh i think kelly actually bought it for like two dollars more than the rental price i think it was like only like what 5.99 to buy no i bought it i got it uh what sale was it i think it was what fourth of july or one of the sales oh no it was a it was prime day prime day it was the same price to rent as it was to buy so it's always on my prime now Three ninety. Yeah, well, anyway. yeah yeah but anyway. yeah very very cool well that <laughs> that's also great um but next week we're gonna be doing back to school special real vile back to school because that's where all the kids are cool and back to school back to school real vials where the kids are cool um yeah so that's yeah. exciting who knows what we'll be featuring will it be slaughter high will it be detention so many great films take place in high schools so keep tuned and keep it real vile you guys have anything else to say to the people out there in real vile land i do i do i want to thank severin films for helping us out at the uh the tournament with our movie night it turned out great we showed some good ones and thank you to them and the people that stuck around till 5 30 a.m watching the movies you guys rock <laughs> chris wow we kazawi it went till 5 30 a.m we did wow Not sunlight yeah mm-hmm Yes, once again, huge thank you to Severin Films for sponsoring our Midnight Movie Marathon at the King of the Kill uh, Deathmatch Tournament. Uh, Ruthless Pro, you know you're always killing it, baby. Uh, Ruthless Chris, speaking of which, you have any other uh, parting words for the people out there in real vile land? No, you know, sorry about the break, but, you know, when... when tragedy strikes, we may have to disappear for a little bit. We always try to be consistent, but uh, we're back on track, so... Uh, expect us to keep uh, keep a rolling on uh, after that, and uh, 
keep it gnarly, keep it nasty, and uh, as Jerem says, keep it real vile. <laughs> no, no, this this is your your your, your shot. Oh, this is when I go, and I'm gonna yeah. say, keep it creepy, keep it spooky. <laughs> God bless America, and send nudes. Ah, cool.